This story starts with a manager of a hockey sports team named Tupan Das. During the British Empire in India, Tupan, along with his team, went to take part in the Berlin Olympics. The team was the strongest team at that time with Samrat as the captain as well as the team's ace. They were on their way to winning their third gold medal, as well as their third win streak in the Olympics. Hitler, the one who at that time led Germany blatantly insulted India, and this angered the Indians living in Germany. They loudly voiced their support for the Indian Revolution. The strength of the Indian national hockey team was on another level from the other team at that time and the support for them was very large, but India's status at that time was not an independent country made them have to give up their glorious achievements on behalf of Britain. Their victory in the Berlin Olympics at that time made Tupan and Samrat have a big dream to show the world that they were strong because they were India, not because they were a part of Britain. Unfortunately, the Berlin Olympics became their last match because of the many wars that took place after that preventing the Olympics to be held again. A few years later, the World War ended, but India still had not yet gained full independence. The absence of the Olympics for a long time made the players stop training and look for another job. Tupan was also fired by the Indian Hockey Federation for being a drunkard. His life started to crumble apart after that. He eventually worked as a betting scalper in a wrestling match venue. One day, he mistakenly recommended another wrestler to the audience to place a bet. He was supposed to recommend a wrestler who was set to lose, but he accidentally did the other way around. It cost his boss a great loss because he had to give money to those who won the bet. Tupan was fired. He was dragged outside and beaten until he was unconscious all night. In the morning, he woke up on the street after a newspaper was blown by the wind and hit his face. When he read the newspaper, Tupan found out that the Olympics would be held again after 12 years. He was so happy to know that and immediately ran back to his house. When he got home, he called the Indian Hockey Federation and informed them that the next Olympics would be held in London in 1948, but after Tupan told them his name, the phone hung up straight away. That happened because Tupan has a bad reputation in the Indian Hockey Federation. He then explained to his wife that he would take India to the Olympics. His wife annoyingly said that he had to give up on his dream since was sacked from the Federation. He then told his wife about the 1928 Olympics. The Indian hockey team was despised by the British, saying that India was not a country, but a colony. Tupan said that the British did this because they were jealous of the Indian team's strength. So in the next Olympics in London, he would take the chance to show the world how good their country is, as well as take his revenge on the British Empire for the 200 years of slavery they did to their country, but knowing how his husband was, Tupan's wife doubted him. After that, he went to Mr. Wadia's residence, the chairman of the Indian Hockey Federation. At that time, Mr. Wadia was having a meeting with Mr. Mehta. Seeing Tupan, Mr. Mehta immediately told the waiter to kick him out, but Mr. Wadia instead gave Tupan a chance to convey his aim. Without further ado, Tupan asked them to entrust him with the reformation of the Indian national hockey team for the London Olympics which will be held in two years. Mr. Mehta reminded Mr. Wadia of Tupan's bad reputation. Hearing that, Tupan denied it immediately. He said that he wasn't talking about his own reputation but India's reputation. India already held a record of three consecutive wins but as British India. Tupan had found out that India was demanding independence from the British and that they would be soon. He thought that it would be the best time for India to show the world the strength of their national hockey team in the Olympics to prove that they could be strong on their own foot. Tupan admitted that the bad things that Mr. Wadia heard about him were true, but despite that, he also loved his country and hockey, and moreover, he was the one who knew for sure the strength of their hockey team. Tupan promised a gold medal for India and that finally won Mr. Wadia's heart. He was given the chance to rebuild the Indian national hockey team. The first thing Tupan did was visit his old friend, Samrat. He offered Samrat to return to be the captain of the national team again. Unfortunately, Samrat refused to join, but he recommended Imtiaz Shah to become their captain. Imtiaz was a former national hockey player who was also a former soldier, but seeing the British waged war, he left the army. After that, he had nowhere else to go. When Tupan offered him to become the team's captain, Imtiaz refused because he thought they would be playing for the British again, but as soon as Tupan told him that they were forming their own national team to avenge the 200 years of slavery committed by the British, Imtiaz happily accepted the offer to become the team's captain. Somewhere in Punjab, a hockey player named Hamad Singh was arrested and forced to play for the police hockey team where at that time, the police were still led by the British government. Hamad bravely said that he and his family wouldn't side with the British Empire and that they supported the Indian Revolution, but he was still forced to play and given the central forward position. In the middle of a match, after scoring a goal, Himan escaped from there but eventually, he was caught and arrested. 
His father came to him to persuade him to join Punjab's police team. At first, Himat refused because he had seen his father beaten by the British police many times. His father then explained to him that by joining the team, he would be able to save many innocent people. After finding the captain for his team, Tupun started traveling around India looking for great players. The first player he found was Raghubir, a skillful and rich hockey player. Tupun offered him to take part in the selection of the Indian national hockey team which would be held in a month. On the other hand, Himat coincidentally lived in the same area as Imtiaz. They even used to practice hockey together. Because of that, Himat and several other players from their area would also take part in the selection of the Indian national hockey team in Bombay. Tupun himself had confirmed the ability of the people recommended by Imtiaz to take part in the selection. Tupun continued his journey around India. He visited one after another city and gathered some good players until finally, the day of national team selection came. Imtiaz introduced himself as the team's captain to all the selected participants. Different from the other participants, Raghubir was a spoiled brat. At that moment, Raghubir was late. He came when Imtiaz was giving a briefing. In the selection match, Imtiaz put him on in the front center. Raghubir confidently said that he would be in that position but Imtiaz had made his decision. During the match, it was clear that Raghubir used to play alone. He would not pass the ball to anyone even if his teammates were free. Himat, who didn't know about Raghubir, kept screaming and asking him to pass the ball but Raghubir didn't care at all. He kept the ball to himself and scored a goal. Raghubir told that Himat was not the person that deserved a pass from him. Sometime later, a meeting was held by the Indian Hockey Federation. They announced that the British Prime Minister had promised India's independence before August 1948, meaning their hockey team would be the first to play independently as a country. All the players who made it through the selection were introduced in the meeting and Tupan was officially assigned as the team's manager. The meeting turned into a celebration. Tupan sang and danced to cheer up everyone, but there was one person that didn't share the same feeling. Mr. Mehta seemed like he was jealous of Tupan's success. Not long after the inauguration, a match was made for the players to show their ability. At that time, Himat who should have played as the central forward was unable to attend because something happened in Punjab. Raghubir was chosen to play that position, and as expected, he played alone, not caring about his teammates. Imtiaz was annoyed and told him to play other sports if he wanted to play alone. Raghubir replied that he did that because he wanted to entertain the audience with his game. He said that he loved it when the fans chanted his name. The next morning, Tupan and Imtiaz went to Amritsar to plan a winning strategy. No one expected that Amritsar was in a bad state. The car Tupan and Imtiaz drove was attacked by a group of rioters who wanted to kill Imtiaz because he was a Muslim. The riot occurred because the British divided them into India and Pakistan. Himad and Tupan tried hard to save Imtiaz who had been soiled in gasoline. After they managed to escape, Himad took them to Imtiaz's house. Along the road, they could see hundreds of Muslims were killed, Imtiaz's house had been burnt by the rioters, but fortunately, his wife and children had been secured in Lahore, an area that was part of Pakistani territory, where the Muslims evacuated. Tupan promised to follow them to Lahore. If things were safe but Imtiaz decided to leave the Indian national hockey team and settle in Lahore. He said the country was not for him. Almost all Muslim players on the Indian national hockey team were forced to move to Pakistan leaving only Shakur Akhtar, the only Muslim player who remained, while other players who were of mixed British and Indian chose to move to Australia. Tupan's dream shattered right in front of his eyes. The disbandment of the Indian team was good news for the British Empire, but then they realized that two new problems arose. The split between India and Pakistan would possibly end up with both countries sending their respective national hockey team to the London Olympics. But one of them was sure that there was not enough time for India and Pakistan to form a good team for the Olympics. After his effort to form the team was gone in vain, Tupan returned to his old life, being a drunkard. At that lowest point in his life, Samrat suddenly came to visit. Samrat said that he took a furlough for three months. He told Tupan to look for players and that he would train them. Suddenly, Tupan got back his motivation because of Samrat's support. He immediately met Mr. Mehta to get approval to form a new national team. It turned out that the funds from the government could be given after a month but Tupan couldn't wait that long, considering the Olympics was right around the corner. Tupan tried to look for another way out. He met several important officials to get financial support. Unfortunately, none of them were willing to help. While he was taking a break, he saw a monk looking for a donation to build a Buddhist school. It happened that the monk was a big fan of hockey. 
The monk even said that in order to be able to listen to the 1936 hockey final broadcast, he walked for two days. When Tupan went to the monastery, the monk was doing meditation. He hadn't been speaking for five years but would always listen when people asked him. Tupan directly said the problem he and his hockey team had. He said that needed a place to practice for three months. The request was refused but, when Tupan said Samra would be the one to train his team, without hesitation, the monk immediately stopped his meditation and permitted the place to be used as their training ground, but Tupan had to pay for his own meals. When he returned home, Tupan was still trying to contact several people to seek financial assistance, but unfortunately, none willed to help him. In front of his wife, he lied, saying that he had found someone to pay for everything and would cook for the entire team. Hearing that, Tupan's wife decided she would be the one to cook and prepare all the food expenses, even if she had to pawn all her jewelry. Tupan was very happy because her trick worked. The next day, Tupan and his wife went shopping for groceries. After that, they went straight to the camp. On the way, they found someone's horse carriage whose wheels were stuck in the mud and decided to help. The muddy road made it difficult for Tupan to push the carriage. Tupan's wife then told him to take off his sandals so his feet could properly stand in the mud. His wife's idea worked very well and he could stand steadily even in the mud. He then praised his wife's good idea. The next day, one by one the players that Tupan had chosen came to the training camp. Just like Imtiaz before, at that time, Samrat chose Hemat to play the central forward. Raguber asked Samrat to play that position but his decision remained the same. Raguber was irritated with that decision. At night, Tupan and Samrat tried to invite Raguber and talked casually with him. Tupan and Samrat said that Raguber is a great player, but his character who always plays individually would have a bad impact on the team. Samrat told him that the best match he had participated in was during the Baton Cup. Raguber was confused because, in that match, Samrat did not score a single goal. Samrat explained that in that match, the opponent was too focused on guarding him. He then deliberately pulled the entire opponent's defense to one side of the field, no opponent was aware of the other side of the field, so it was wide open. Samrat immediately passed the ball to his teammate and the ball can be easily dribbled toward the opponent's goal. It was the only goal in the match. Tupan then said that the best player was not the one who made the goal but can also pass the ball to a position that can result in a goal. Raguba remained silent and listened to the words. One day, Mr. Maynard came to see the situation at the training camp. The moment he set foot on the training grounds, he found all the players were fighting. Seeing that, the requested funds that Tapas asked for were suspended. Upon knowing the suspended funding, Tupan immediately called Mr. Wadia who was in New York at that time. Tuned out, he has heard from Mr. Mena and he agreed with the decision that Mr. Mena made. Tupan asked for a chance to form a new team, and just like before, he was sure that he can prove the quality of the team he made. Tupan explained that he and his wife had sacrificed everything they have. Without financial support, their dream would never come true. Mr. Wadia wanted to provide the funds as long as Tupan dared to promise a gold medal for India which Tupan agreed without any hesitation. Technically, the team he had formed was ready, but they were not yet united as a team. They still gather in small groups according to their hometown. To overcome that, Samrat and Tupan told them to move bricks from one side of the field to the other side. Everyone was running and racing to move the bricks faster. After every brick was moved, Samrat asked them to return them to their original position. Samrat kept asking them to do that over and over again and made everyone exhausted, until suddenly, one of them realized that if everyone formed a line from one side to the other side of the field, they would be able to move the bricks without getting themselves soaked in sweat. Samrat and Tupan were happy that they finally realized how to unite as a team. Three months passed and the training camp finally ended. Tupan discussed with Samrat who deserved to be the captain. Samrat thought Devon might suit the position. Samrat then told Tupan that Hemant is their ace and that Tupan must use his ability wisely. An announcement ceremony for the selected players for the Indian national team was held. Devon was assigned as the team captain and Raguber as the vice captain. After announcing the whole team, Mr. Mena asked Tupan to sing and dance to entertain everyone. While Tupan was dancing, Mr. Mena asked one of the waiters to put something in Tupan's drink. After drinking that, Tupan lost control of his behavior, making the guest who came feel uncomfortable, and because of that, he was expelled from the Federation. The responsibility for the team was given to Mr. Mehta. The players finally flew to London. There, the Pakistani players who previously played for India greeted each other. Imtiaz, Siddiq, and other Muslim players came to play for the Pakistan national team. 
The British Empire knew that India and Pakistan were strong teams so only one of them could advance to the semi-finals. While the British team was put together with weak teams so they could win easily, India and Pakistan were put in the same group so that only one of them could advance. Devong and Raghubar asked Mr. Mehta to issue an objection report to the Olympics organizing committee, but Mr. Mehta actually asked them all to follow what had been announced. Mr. Mehta didn't want to receive any objections from the team. He even used his authority as the team manager so that the team had to obey what he told them. The team's annoyance at Mr. Mehta led them to make several attempts to mock him and call him names using words written in Mr. Mehta's room. Unfortunately, this action actually made Mr. Mehta stop giving the players pocket money. They then threatened to stop practicing if Mr. Mehta did this. In the end, Mr. Wadia found out about the mess that happened between the Indian national hockey team. He secretly contacted Tupan and ordered him to leave for London to help the Indian national hockey team. The first thing Tupan did in London was to team up with the Pakistani team manager. They made a bit of a fuss so the organizing committee finally put out the new match group. The three strongest teams, India, Pakistan, and Britain were in different groups so they might be able to face each other in the semi-finals or even in the final stages. Tupan knew that each team would be watching their tactics closely to study the opponent's game, therefore, throughout the matches, Tupan only played out his three aces, Devon, Raghubir, and Chandra. Meanwhile, Himant, the team's fourth ace was benched so the other team wouldn't know his playing style. India and Pakistan made it into the semi-finals, but in the semi-finals, Pakistan had to face Britain. Tupan provided support to Imtiaz, but sadly, Pakistan lost to Britain. Down the left-hand side. He hits it. That's a play left in the second half. And then... The chance to go for goal. The hope to take their revenge for 200 years of slavery by the British Empire was now in India's national hockey team. Himad hadn't been played until the semi-finals. A feeling of jealousy came from his heart. He even thought that Raghubar had deliberately erased his name so he couldn't play. The accusation finally led to a fight. Tupan told them that he planned to play Himad in the semi-final but Mr. Mehta, Devong, and Raghubar refused it as a disciplinary punishment. Tupan explained the plan he had prepared from the start but they thought Tupan was taking a lot of risks by changing the team's formation which has been winning since the beginning. With arrogance, Raghubar asked how much a goal Tupan wanted. Tupan got very annoyed and angry. He also scolded Himad who didn't want to be more patient with his plan. He told him about the fact that Samrat called him the team's ace. According to Tupan's prediction in the semi-finals, they had a little trouble. Even though in the end they managed to win and entered the final stage. The team's arrogance was out of control upon winning the semi-final match. Tupan said that their victory in the semi-finals was just luck and ruined their winning celebration. Tupan's emotions peaked. He believed that their team would not win against Britain in the final later. In the semi-final, Himat was again not played. In the first half, their team had struggled against Britain and was losing by 2-0. At halftime, they realized that they needed a new strategy. Tupan then asked who was the best at playing long passes on the team. They all knew that Himat could do that but Mr. Mehta insisted on not going to play Himat for disciplinary reasons. He felt that he wasn't needed in the team and left the room, but after contemplating for a moment, he came back. He admitted that his action of fighting Raghubir was his fault. He then apologized to everyone, especially Raghubir. He said that he had vowed to play for himself and for his team. Mr. Mehta then said that there are already five people from Punjab who were playing and that there were still players from other areas. Tupan suddenly said that everyone here played for India, not for a certain part of it. Tupan said that that was a hockey match, not politics. Tupan then showed the Indian flag that he had kept since the Olympics in Berlin. His dream was to raise his country's flag and sang their own national anthem together. Tupan swore that if Raghubar still insisted on his ego, he would never understand for the rest of his life. Finally, him out was played. In the last round of the final, Himat's entry into the match succeeded in giving India a chance to score points. Suddenly, the weather started raining. The team struggled with the slippery field while the Britain players were used to the changes in the weather. They were prepared with special shoes that made them still able to run. Seeing the players keep falling, Tupan told them all to take off their shoes. Shortly after they took off their shoes, they got used to the slippery field and quickly managed to equalize which might be a good sign for them. The players' enthusiasm was felt by the spectators from various countries, and together, they were cheering for India. The atmosphere at that time reminded Tupan of the match in Berlin where the home crowd cheered for the Indian team, not their own team. 
In the last seconds of the match, Himop managed to add one point for India so they managed to win, proving to the world that they were strong on their own feet and keeping the promise to the country to bring the gold medal. The Indian flag could finally be raised for the first time at the Olympics.